good afternoon. I have a, a picture of Padre Pio here. I am going to read the front page with his picture. Saint Padre Pio, the priest with the stigmata. This is the uh, was on the tenth of fourth, twenty fifteen. This was I took it off the internet, but I've. I'm going to read the contents that may be double, but it's for those who want to know more about him without... I will go into the other things as well. On June the 16th, 2002, Pope John Paul II canonised in Rome Padre Pio of Piet Celsina, one of the greatest saints of all times. There are saints who've been known for healing. There are saints who could read souls. There are saints who were known for levitation. There were saints who bore the stigmata or were seen in apparition or who had the odor of sanctity. There are saints who could understand languages that they didn't know. But Padre Pio of Pietrelcina, who died on September the 23rd, 1968, had all these charismas and more. In fact, not since St. Francis of Assisi has there been such a miracle worker. And as a matter of fact, Padre Pio was the first priest to bear the stigmata, the holy wounds of Christ. Just like Francis of Assisi, St. Pio is a man who healed literally thousands in the holy name of Jesus Christ while he was still alive, who could read souls, knowing in case after case exactly what a person in confession had done, who was seen in dozens of cases in bilocation, appearing far from where he actually was. There were accounts that defy the belief of even the most ardent believer a sighting of him at the Vatican, even though he never left San Giovanni a monastery. The transfiguration of his face into that of Jesus during the consecration. A worker named Giovanni Savino, who lost an eye that later materialized under the band bandages after Pio visited him in bilocation. Like the Apostle Paul, Padre Pio of Pietrelcina placed at the centre of his life and apostolic work the cross of his Lord, as his strength, has wis his wisdom and his glory, inflamed by love of Jesus Christ, he became like him in the sacrifice of himself for the salvation of the world. This worthy follower of St. Francis of Assisi was born on May the 25th, 1887 at Pietrelcina in the Archdiocese of Benevento, Italy, the son of Grazio Forgione and Maria Giuseppe de Nuncio. He was baptised the next day and given the name Francesco. At the age of 12, he received the sacrament of confirmation and made his first Holy Communion. And a strange thing happened to me yesterday. Um, I've had a very bad ingrowing toenail. For uh, uh, days and days, it's been bothering me a lot. And I was never to have one like that again because they removed it in, in, in Manchester once took the whole nail off and put this liquid down and said you'll never get one again well it's been troubling me and troubling me and troubling me and all of a sudden by today it's completely gone i uh, i mean that i'm not not joking and i'm not like i'm sincere it even my neighbor she was astonished uh, because she i was moaning at her and showing it yesterday the inflammation has gone the digging is everything has gone it's just not there hurting me anymore it's just not as it was and I have to thank the prayers of Padre Pio because <laughs> it can only be him who prayed for me so I'll continue 
reading um, what I've typed up, uh, uh, which I should have done before I recorded those others. I found this book after I'd done the others. So this is the St. Padre Pio, the beginning, which I haven't done all before recording the other folders. St. Padre Pio of Pietrelcina, one of the greatest saints of all times. On June 16, 2002, Pope John Paul II canonized in Rome Padre Pio, one of the greatest saints. And uh, I, have, I have read all that, so I'm, I'm not going to read all that again because I just read it. But I will go into what happens next. Okay, so that was one, two, um, right, I'm, go I'm going to continue on page two. And as a matter of fact, Padre Pio was the first priest to bear, bear the stigmata, the holy wounds of Christ, just like St. Francis of Assisi. St. Pio is a man who healed literally thousands while he was still alive and who could read souls, knowing in case after case exactly what a person in confession had done. I think I've, I've read all that, I have read all that, so I'm going to, sorry about that, I'm jumping ahead. Like the Apostle Paul, Padre Pio of Pietrelcina placed at the centre of his life and apostolic work, the cross of his Lord, as his strength, his wisdom, and his glory. Inflamed by love of Jesus Christ, he became like him in the sacrifice of himself for the salvation of the world. This worthy follower of St. Francis of Assisi was born on May the 25th, 1887, at Pietrelcina in the Archdiocese of Benevento, Italy. He was the son of Grazio Forgioni and Maria Giuseppe D'Annunzio. He was baptised the next day and given the name Francesco. At the age of 12, he received the Sacrament of Confirmation and made his first Holy Communion. On January the 6th, 1903, at the age of 16, he entered the novitiate of the Capuchin Friars at Morconi, where on January the 22nd, he took the Franciscan habit and the name Brother Theo. At the end of his novitiate year, he took simple vows and on January the 27th, 1907, made his solemn profession. After he was ordained a priest on August the 10th, 1910, at Benevento, he stayed at home with his family until 1916 for health reasons. In September of that year, he was sent to the friary of San Giovanni Rotondo and remained there until his death in 1968. The demons, furious at seeing him so devoted to the Lord, left him no respite and disturbed him continuously as their worst enemy. Unable of diverting him from his holy resolutions with their satanic threats and trickery, they waged against him at night a fiery fight of which the invincible soldier of Christ kept more than once the visible marks on his body. These diabolical scenes were often followed by ineffable celestial visions that put on his face the reflection of a high spirituality. On the level of social charity, he committed himself to relieving the pain and suffering of many families, chiefly through the foundation of the Casa Solivo della Sovereza, House for the Relief suffering opened on May the 5th, 1956, I was 10 then, for Padre Pio, faith was life. He willed everything and did everything in the light of faith. He was assiduously devoted to prayer. He passed the day and a large part of the night in conversation with God. He would say in books, we seek God. 
in prayer we find him. Prayer is the key which opens God's heart. Faith led him always to accept God's mysterious will. When he celebrated Holy Mass, one could see Padre Pio's stigmata. The stigmata, it was in Pietrelcina on September the 17th, 1915, the same date as St. Francis of Assisi, that Padre Pio received the first invisible stigmata. These signs of the passion of our Lord gave him so cruel pain some days, and especially on Fridays, that his confessor, the only other person to know about his stigmata, thought it wise to excuse him from saying the Mass. However, Padre Pio did not use this dispensation and continued to celebrate Holy Mass in an old chapel dedicated to St. Pius, martyr. Three years later, in 1918, after his transfer from Foggia to San Giovanni Rotundo, the wounds of Christ appeared visibly on the hands and feet of Padre Pio, who was from now on no longer able to hide them. He relates himself the event as reported by Bernard Ruffin in his book, Padre Pio, The True Story. I was hearing the confession of our boys when suddenly I was filled with extreme terror at the sight of a heavenly being who presented himself to the eye of my intellect. He said, held some kind of a weapon in his hand, something like a long, sharp pointed steel blade, which seemed to spew out fire. At the very instant that I saw this, I saw that personage hurl the weapon into my soul with all his might. This was on August the 5th, 1918 and it was the onset of Pio's side wound. His hands and feet were pierced later, on September the 20th, between 9 and 10 in the morning, while my students were taking their recreation in the garden. I was alone in the choir, sitting on the bench, in the spot reserved for the vicar, he wrote. I was there making my thanksgiving after Holy Mass. All of a sudden, a great light shone around about my eyes. In the midst of this light, there appeared the wounded Christ. He said nothing to me before he disappeared. The crucifix in the choir, he said, had transformed itself into the being, the hands, the feet and side of the being were dripping with blood and the countenance terrified Pio. From him there came forth beams of light with shafts of flame that wounded me in the hands and feet. My side had already been wounded in the 5th of August of the same year. Padre Pio would bear the wounds for 50 years. A few minutes after his death, they mysteriously vanished. I'm going to end there because that's where I ended recording it on the 5th of October. No, actually it says here, 2.43 a.m. 12th of October 2015 and I finished typing it on the 5th of October 2015 so I've just recorded it now on the 10th of December 2020. That one was for audio, Heavens Road FM 
this one's hopefully going to go up with the ones I've already done without doing this introduction. They're already up there on YouTube. So I'll continue with this folder and apologise for doing this after I've done the others. God bless you all. He's my hero. Beautiful eyes.